Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Commerce Tools Elevate. We are coming at you from the Miami Beach Convention Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm here with my co-host and analyst, Shelly Kramer. Shelly, I have a fun fact for you. Americans spent $1.368 billion on their pets last year. I am right there spinning yes. it up every you're, you're step of the way. Pet, I am um, contributing, yes. yeah. <laughs> Good. I am. It's an important part of the economy. It surprises me in no way whatsoever. A great segue into our guest. And he is Greg Fancher, EVP and Chief Information Technology Officer at PetSmart. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I want to talk to you about all this, this spend that we're yeah. doing on our pets and really about how you approach commerce when you think about these pet owners who love their furry companions so deeply and want to make sure they are giving them the right food, making sure they have the right uh, leashes and collars and, and blankets and beds. Yeah. How, how, do you, how are you inside their brains making sure that you are delivering the kind of technological solutions they need to, to get that all done? Well, so I think the first thing that we start with is the fact that um, we believe that um, you know, having pets in our life makes us better people, right? And, um, you know, we really think about doing anything for pets because at the end of the day, we feel like they would do the same for us. Um, and so when you start in that place, one of the things that we always use as a decision criteria is to really look at how we can bring pet parents closer to their pets, okay? So if you take that as the, the starting premise, um, you know, we've got 1,600 stores in the U.S. and Canada and Puerto Rico, right? And we have online. And we really look at what we can do with that online experience and the in-store experience, bring it together to really help pet parents be close to their pets. Okay. And then how are you using technology to make sure that that happens? Because yeah. that, and I, and I love that that is the guiding mission is yeah. that we're going to do anything for pets and help pet parents take care yeah. of their creatures. So there are a couple things. The first is we have a lot of services. Um, so we have salon services for grooming and training and hotel for overnight. Those are all a part of what goes on in the store. And so anything that we can do to help our pet parents um, schedule online, be able to reschedule online, make sure they're connecting with the groomer that they want and that our hotels know all of the special needs and we make sure that the pets have like all of their immunizations to keep everyone safe. Um, there's that aspect of it, combining that with making sure that we're able to suggest like the best pet products for them to solve problems they have and to meet uh, the pet's needs ongoing and bringing that all together into one consistent experience, that's our goal. And so what that does is that means that we need to make sure our platforms are up to date and current in the store and then also online. So going through and updating the technology and really making sure that we have an open platform that we can then hook in different pieces of technology to change the experience over time, to tweak it and make it really the best for that customer, that pet parent. So would you, would it be safe to say that a kind of a continuous state of innovation is kind of how you approach this in the sense that nothing is ever truly completely done? And what I mean there is that when you're navigating a digital transformation journey, one of the things that I've spent a decade trying to educate customers about is that you're never done. Yeah. Okay? And so I think that's really the beauty to me of composable commerce is to be able to pick pieces that you need to solve for whatever you have going on at any moment in time, but then to be able to watch, measure, tweak, you know, and it's a continual process of continuing to innovate, continuing to improve, continuing to evolve. Would you say that that's a little bit of what you're doing on a regular basis? Undoubtedly, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there are some bigger pieces, like uh, for us, we're having to replace our core commerce system with a fundamentally open commerce system, commerce right. tools. Right. Um, that gives us the ability to then hook in different pieces to yeah. it and change those over time. 
There are bigger changes and smaller changes, but we're always testing and validating. And then as the needs of our pet parents change over time, that's going to shift as well. Sure. So we're also going through and making sure we have open platforms in our store for both uh, merchandising at the point of sale and then also for the salon scheduling and things like that. So we can bring it all together into one experience and then modify and adjust to make it easier and better. Um, Cause you know, people's needs are changing all the time. Right. right. As our pets age and, and, yeah. and maybe have pet babies of their own too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that, that happens at a conference like this is that executives get together and they share best practices yeah. and they give feedback and then they talk about problems that they're experiencing and how they've solved them. What are some of the conversations that you're having here in terms of this composable commerce approach and, and how you are expanding and getting into greater wallet share? And, and what, what kinds of things are you talking about with other, maybe not competitors, but other retailers like yours? Yeah. So I would say there are two main things that have really been fascinating for me, and they really helped me with my practice of leading technology organization. The first one is looking at how all the different companies have made the large change of going from one big, huge e-commerce platform to another one, right? And sort of all those different processes, the watchouts, lookouts, things like that. The other area that, quite frankly, I didn't necessarily expect was this combination of services and merchandising, both in-store and online and how the online experience can really enhance getting the services and also getting customers in-store and making it easier in-store for customers, both services and merchandising. I didn't expect that, um, but there are a number of companies in different parts of retail that are experiencing that same kind of scenario. Yeah. One of the things I want to ask you about is personalization, and you got yeah. into it a little bit earlier talking about uh, the pet parents and their needs changing over time. How are you using and integrating AI to help understand the the pet the pet parent evolution or the pet parent journey, shall yeah. we say? So when we think about AI, that's a very broad of term. Of course it is, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I think about it in three different buckets as far as what's going on with PetSmart today. The first is sort of the traditional machine learning predictive analytics. And so we have 65 million customers and we have tons of data on them and that allows us to run a set of algorithms and develop algorithms to understand what pet parents needs are today, sort of where they're at in their journey with their pets and allows us to do product recommendations, things like that. It also allows us to create offers that make sense and the pet parents find a value. Okay. So that's sort of like homegrown. Um, by nature of software progressing over time, you get the second bucket, which is really existing tools we have today that are interjecting more and more artificial intelligence and in how they operate. So by virtue of say, you know, we put in a search engine, Algolia, right? And it's a, a great search engine and it does what you think of as a standard search. Well, then we start turning on different features of it, self-learning, where it's doing its own learning and providing better search results over time. So we didn't have to program any of that. It's just sort of part of what we bought with that service. The third sort of space for me is the thing that people are talking a lot about these days, and that's more of the alternate input and output methods of artificial intelligence. So Gen AI, where you ask it a question, it gives you fully foreign paragraphs that are beautiful. We're looking at using that in our stores to see how we can better serve up pet care information to our associates, as an example. There are others around video input, um, and that can help all kinds of different areas, you know, around inventory management and stuff like that. We're also looking at how we can take some of that generative AI and better answer customer questions faster and other associate questions faster. So it's sort of across the board. I think the one area people always look at is personalization. Um, you know, I would tell you right now we're having a lot of fun with personalization with our new um, loyalty program that we just launched because then giving offers to people based on that past purchase history that really resonate yeah. um, and using machine learning AI to really drive that and, and provide that value to our pet parents. 
Do you have any examples? Because I mean, I think that that is something that we that we we just heard from uh, an executive at Ulta Beauty talking about driving you loyalty through technology, yeah. understanding what people want, what they're looking for before they know, and helping yeah. them with, with yeah. discoverability. Do you have any examples of how you are increasing conversions or, or growing yeah. wallet share based on this? You know, I think probably one of the most interesting things that we're doing is we're looking at our our pet parents that do services what kind of services they do, and then being able to suggest merchandise that really makes sense, and vi vice versa. You know what kind of animals people have because they fill out their profile. Right. And you can say things like, hey, tick season is coming up. You can come in, we've got these great products. And then also, you know, the time of year around different kinds of salon um, services that you can provide for, you know, coming in the summer when shed a little bit more and going into winter, things like that. So really looking at all those different opportunities. So that's, yeah, that makes perfect sense. What kind, what are the biggest challenges that you think that you would say you experience along the way in when you're trying to orchestrate these multi-channel journeys, when you're trying to personalize at scale, when you're trying to do these things, is there a, one or a handful of challenges that you're working on or have you nailed it all? I'm always interested to know uh, sort of yeah. what you're wrestling with. Well, you know, PetSmart uh, is a company that has not been created recently. Um, True. You know, we've been in business for quite some time now, and you make investments in the past in different kinds of technology. And um, as time evolves, there's some of that that you need to really look at and focus on around bringing different pieces of your business together that you didn't originally think there would be value like 30 years ago. People weren't necessarily thinking about having a single clean <laughs> customer record right. that you could use uh, for, you know, some proactive marketing and personalization and things like that. You know, 30 years ago, we were walking into stores, writing checks for yeah. our purchases and being asked for our date of birth and social security number that was then written on our checks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, we've progressed a little bit from those dates. That we have. Uh, security, <laughs> you know, you bring up a yeah. good point. Security is always something where, you know, you're always balancing ease yeah. and convenience and security. Um, I think a key point there is that, if you don't have security, then nothing's easy. So it's always a good balance to make sure you're protecting people and, and ensuring that you're keeping the trust of your pet parents. Well, we heard on the main stage that e that Commerce Tools is a company that wants customer feedback. They yeah. want to know what's working for you. Yep. So so if this is your chance to, yeah. to let Commerce Tools know what, ha what have you been able to do with Composable Commerce yep. and what are you hoping to do in the future in terms of what would make your life and your customers' lives easier? Yeah, so I would say um, being able to put it in in a piece-by-piece -piece process because it's not one big thing, right? That... Um, allows us to drive down risk. It allows us to ease into making sure that not only does commerce tools work, but it works within the context of our environment. That's where you come up with the biggest challenge is, yeah. um, you know, the services around cart and checkout and servicing up, you know, a product detail page or product listing pages, it works. The question is, how do you make it work with your data, your promotions, your pricing, um, and hooking it into your broader enterprise? That's where the challenge is always going to be. Um, Commerce Tools makes progress with a lot of different connectors and different tools, but everyone has their own pecu peculiarities yeah. um, and issues that they run into that, you know, it's always going to be part of the game, right? Right, right. right. But I can see how that would be such an attractive part of the value prop of composable commerce solutions because you can kind of, they sort of meet you where you are. Yep. I think this is, and I feel like I say this all the time, but this is to me, when you're talking about any technology vendor with a solution, being able to do that, I think is incredibly important. Me, customers where they are, we're not all one size fits all. Yep. It's not a, you know, we, everybody has to conform. So being able to say, okay, this is a big change for us here at PetSmart and we want to do this and we want to plug this in yep. and we want to, we think we know what's going to happen. We want to make sure that happens. Okay, good. Now we're cooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then we're going to plug something else in. So I feel like that sort of eases some of the pressure along the way as opposed to going with a solution that requires you to just 100% dive in and deal with those early stages of things not working quite as they're supposed to or whatever. It just seems like this is a much less 
less risky path to take to get to where you want to be. Yeah, most definitely. I think um, there are two pieces that one, bite-sized chunks, but two, there's not a prescribed sequence. Each company is different. So you can start with, you know, maybe the whole front end layer, and then you go back and do some of the commerce pieces, or you can start taking a slice off at a time, cutting it differently. Um, that really allows, has allowed me um, to figure out the right sequence for our company and make sure we can do that in the lowest risk possible way. Excellent. A great note to end on. Greg, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A really fun conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Shelley Kramer. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's coverage of Commerce Tools Elevate. You are watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage. Awesome.